This episode is about a car that is very popular, very expensive and square, very square. And it always was square, it remains almost unchanged, but serves a very different purpose today than what it was intended to back when the guys in Germany designed it. So join me today on a trip of the G-Wagon history. Let's start with the name. How many of you know what does the G actually stand for? I didn't know either. It stands for Geländewagen, which means cross-country vehicle in English. The first idea of creating a rugged, capable and quite simple off-road vehicle came into the Daimler engineers heads in the 1970s. It was a simple design, in fact so simple that they used wood instead of clay when making the mock-up. The first drivable prototype was ready for testing in 1974. It was done so on the Sahara Desert and the Arctic Circle. You don't see that too often today, if at all. The development was divided into two model lines, for military use and for public use. They were a bit different, but shared the same basic features. The most important, a very robust all-wheel drive system and great off-road capabilities. The G-Class went into production in 1979, available in five body styles. The two-door wagon, four-door wagon, two-door convertible, two-door panel van and two-door pickup. The engine choices were also diverse. You could get an engine with power output from 72 HP up to 150. That doesn't seem like a lot today, but in comparison to other off-road vehicles at the time, it was quite spry. The biggest gain in global fame was when the Pope had a G-Wagon made into a Pope mobile when he visited Germany in 1980. It was the first Pope mobile to feature a see-through box that lets the Pope stand up while riding in his G-Wagon. Pretty cool, right? The G-Wagon was not officially sold in the US, but grey import specialists brought some and modified them to meet the US regulations, until 1988 when a new federal law put a stop to it. The first major styling update came in 1990. New interior and exterior with luxury features but also improved off-road capabilities. It featured a permanent all-wheel drive system and you could now get anti-lock brakes, something you would expect to have on any car as standard. And although it might look like the G-Wagon was completely new, it was not. Under all the leather and wooden dashboard, it was still the same chassis as in the first G-Class from 1979. Because why should you change something that works, right? In 1993, a company called Europa got a permission to legally import and sell the G-Class into the US. But it wasn't cheap. You had to pay a lot if you wanted to have an imported G yourself that resulted in high price tag as well as high rarity and exclusivity. The demand was too high for Mercedes to just overlook it and let the import company Europa have all the profits. So in 2001 they started to import into the US themselves. The G-Wagons were getting bigger engines, more powerful and also becoming more luxurious. AMG variants started to make their way into the lineup of G's, with the first being the G55 AMG Compressor, equipped with a supercharged 8-cylinder engine with 476 horsepower. That's a big performance for SUV from 2003. Mercedes tried to replace the old box on wheels with the new GL class in 2007 
a free row new tech luxury SUV. People will definitely prefer that over the ancient G. It was changed only slightly in styling, right? No, they did not. People loved the G. The demand never went down, it kept rising and gave us some crazy Gs you would never think of even in your wildest dreams. Want something insanely off-road capable and luxurious at the same time? Then the 4x4 squared is just for you. A Mercedes monster truck just for your needs. And comes with a factory warranty. You might be impressed, but four wheels are just a bit less than what you want. Maybe you want to stand out a bit more? Then don't be afraid. Mercedes got your back with the 6x6, a monster truck with not just four, but six wheels and a pickup bed in the back, lined with wood. Yes, real wood. For, you know, off-road stuff. But not everybody might like going off-road and getting dirty. You maybe want to just feel the breeze in your hair and be driven by your driver around sunny coastline. Then another monster truck G could be just for you. This time from my back that ultra luxury brand that Mercedes owns. The G55 Landalay has a retractable roof, at least the rear half of it, and reclining massaging seats for your ultimate luxury. A lot of cars where you need to look down on people. Hmm, where are you going with this Mercedes? But as much crazy as these vehicles seem, you got to give it to Mercedes for making them. I mean, is there any other brand that makes something as crazy as this? But also as boring as this? I don't know any, but you can let me know in the comments if you know. In 2018, Mercedes realized that they just cannot keep going with the old G platform anymore. So a new G came to town. It might look very similar, but the only thing it shares with the old one are the door handles and the metal spare tire cover. It got longer, wider, more luxurious and overall better. But what did stay almost the same is the looks. In today's world of emission regulations and sleek design, the G-Class still is that box on wheels that could take you anywhere. And people love it for that. And that's a brief history of the Go Anywhere class. It remains one of the most capable off-road vehicles on the roads today, even though almost nobody uses them off-road. The G is an icon, it is a legend and forever will be. Thank you for watching and see you next time.